Hi and welcome back to Cut the Crackle. Today we're going to be looking at this. The Lego Hidden Side El Fuego Stunt Truck. This one I actually picked up after my initial Hidden Side haul. It was just one I was on the fence about getting. I knew I wasn't first on the train or seafood diner and at the time the Haunted High School, but I kinda liked the look of this. I just wasn't 100% sure. But in the end, I finally decided to pull the trigger, and now we're going to take a look inside. So here it is, all built up. The majority or bulk of this set is made up by El Fuego Stunt Truck, and then you have the motorcycle, more as a side assembly. It's not a motorcycle, baby, it's a chopper, come on. At the moment, El Fuego and his buddy Jack are just minding their own business in El Fuego's stunt truck, when a couple of gnarly bikers ride up alongside them. What's the worst that could happen? Well this apparently. Turns out these hairs of havoc have been ghostified by some spooky spectres. Our heroes better figure out how JB's latest ghost cannon works fast, or this stunt truck will soon be their hearse. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look at the stunt truck itself. I really like the way this thing looks. It's part picker, part monster truck, and I think it just looks like a cool toy. The kind of thing that you instinctively want to push around and play with. So this thing does have a few stickers, got a very large one there. But as much as I hate stickers, these definitely add that extra oomph to the vehicle's appearance. One not so pretty area is this bit over or behind the front wheels here. I mean, it's not too bad. Those Technic pieces at the back just kind of look like suspension maybe. Although we'll see in a bit that this actually doesn't have front suspension. It would have been nice to get some sort of rim for the wheel arch though, as it just looks a little underdone in terms of the design here. On the side, there is what I initially thought was meant to be a lamp, but it doesn't have any trans piece for the bulb. So with its proximity to this paint roller handle piece, you can see this as a lever for a secondary weapon or blaster. Just imagine this firing out orbs or proton beams. As I mentioned, this truck doesn't have any inbuilt front suspension, but if you pull down this flap like piece here, you can see it springs up and you can push back down on the back end and it just keeps bouncing back. It's nothing new, LEGO have done this kind of suspension before on vehicles and it works well. I'm just not sure why they excluded it from the front of the truck. Up on the bonnet you have this supercharger engine build, which helps give the truck a really beefed up look. And a couple more stickers add some extra detail. I really do love that green and yellow motif on the red. Down below that you've got some nice detailing with the grill, and some mixel teeth in flat silver adds that mean beefy feel. The stunt truck's main artillery, of course, is this cannon up here. I like how it resembles what I dubbed the Sonic Blaster from the Paranormal Intercept bus. It is a different build and design, but there's a visual continuity between the two, which I think helps in terms of building the fictional science behind the story of this theme. Sadly, this has absolutely zero articulation, so the only way you're able to aim this thing is just by moving the whole truck itself. At the back, in what would be the storage area of a pickup truck, we have the mechanics of what is meant to power the cannon and make it work. And here is where you can interact in the app by scanning these different colour cylinders with your phone. You just turn this gear piece here to rotate them round. Next up, we have the motorcycle or chopper. It's a pretty simple build, but I like it. You can see there's room for two minifigures to sit at the back. Like the truck, this does use a few stickers, but I don't think they're as necessary as the ones on the truck. Except maybe this one here on the Nexo Knight Shield. That looks pretty cool, but to be honest, I probably would have preferred a brick-built headlight rather than just a flat picture of one. There's not a lot more to this than what you see. But I think that's fine. This is probably one of the more realistic brick built motorcycles we've had in a while, in terms of scale. If they're not using the preformed chassis piece, they always seem to be massively oversized, but this looks and feels pretty proper. Nice use of Technic pieces to give the front that classic 
elongated look that choppers have and yeah, just a really nice, well done build. Job done. This set comes with four minifigures. Going from left to right, we have Jack, Dwayne, Joey, and El Fuego himself. But wait, doesn't El look a bit familiar? That's because this is none other than the friendly school janitor, Douglas Elton or Diaz. Yep, it seems our mild-mannered washerman has a secret identity. Toilet cleaner by day and stunt driver by night. In practical terms, this is just the exact same minifig we got in the Ghost Lab set. Except that he now has this red cape and a nice helmet with his logo on top. It's the same logo we saw on his shirt peeking out of his janitor overalls on the other minifig. Which is why it's surprising he's still wearing them now. When I first heard that this character had a secret identity, I expected him to have a completely different costume. The name El Fuego, for me, brings to mind images of luchadors, Mexican wrestlers, so I expected more of a traditional underpants on the outside type outfit. But it's still a decent fig, and it's nice to get that helmet piece with a unique print. Heading back to the start, Jack here is in his secondary outfit, which we already saw in the Rex Shrimp Boat set, and he has the same face print as that figure as well. Our two new characters this time are Dwayne and Joey, and whilst they do share the exact same leg piece, they do have some great design work on their torsos. You can see that both have what appears to be a bunny skull logo. On Dwayne, it's on a medallion chained around his chest, and on Joey, it hangs as a pendant from a necklace. The reason being is that both these characters are part of the notorious biker gang, the Hairs of Havoc. All of these figures but Joey come with an alternate expression, and here's what Dwayne and Joey look like when they have been taken over by ghosts. Those ectoplasmic wings that Joey is sporting are a new one for me, but I do believe they also come in at least one other set. Those twin revolvers he's clutching are 100% exclusive to this set in that colour. And I've been told that scanning them in the app unlocks a special boss battle. Canonically, she's only meant to have one, but you do get a spare. And I think she looks more badass dual wielding than both. I don't even remember what was putting me off so much, but whatever it was, I'm glad I got past it and decided to give this set a chance, because it really is a fun set. Both vehicles look great, and they have very contagious brumability. Yeah, that's a word now. We've got swoosh ability for planes and spaceships, but for road vehicles, it's going to be brumability. You heard it here first, folks. The colour scheme on the truck is gorgeous, and I don't even mind that it relies a fair bit on stickers. I do wish the cannon had some movement to it, though. I also think they could have pushed the superhero stunt driver look further with Diaz. The highlight, though, has to be Dwayne and Joey and the introduction of this in-universe biker gang, the Hairs of Havoc. I love that, and I hope we get to see more of the gang in the future. What do you think of the El Fuego stunt truck? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, and if you haven't already, be a hero and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Laters.